Blessed be the name of the Lord. I greet you all with the peace of the Lord Jesus. In reverence to the Word of God, I invite you all to stand. We're going to read in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 10. The final verses of this chapter. Let's read the second part of the verse 25. I think there's something. Teacher. What shall I do to inherit the eternal life? We adore God. We are grateful for this moment of fellowship, for the power of the blood of Jesus upon us, for this moment in your presence, for the praises that we have given to you, and for the blessing of joy that you have given us. Blessed be your name for your word. Help us now in the name of Jesus. Amen. The church may be seated. What shall I do to inherit the eternal life? The man that made this question, he makes this question for the ones, for the one that was the only one that could give the right answer and what he is expected, which is the answer for the eternal life. So Jesus, right after the question, Jesus starts to make a question to this man. And the question is, what is written in the scriptures? As for the dialogue there is in between someone that's supposed to know the scriptures and the grace, which is Jesus. It was the encounter in between the law and the grace. The, the man that made the question was a doctor of the law and he is expecting a satisfactory answer. So he uses two verses of the Old Testament to justify before Jesus. So he mentioned Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 5. Love the Lord the God with all your heart, all your soul, all your strength. So Jesus uses this as a part of the answer. And later on, he went to Leviticus chapter 19, verse 18, says, Do not revenge and do not hold grudge against the children of your people. But love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. So we see that this man was well instructed about the law. And when he gives the answer to Jesus, Jesus congratulated him and said, You answer very well. You are right. First, love God above everything. And secondly, love the neighbor as yourself. So the doctor of the law answered so well 
that later on Jesus mentioned these commandments in Gospel of Mark when Jesus says love your God with all your heart all your soul and all your understanding and all your strength this is the first commandment and the second is similar love your neighbor as yourself there's no other greater than that so you, we see that looks like this man, this principle, he was in the, the way, the correct way. This teacher was in the way to reach the eternal life. So the Bible mentioned that the man cannot justify himself before God. And apparently this is what this expert approached Jesus to do, to justify himself. So Jesus gave him an answer, saying, you, you answer very well. Now you're going to do as follows. Do that, and you leave, you shall leave. One thing is to memorize and to know, to say something, and something else is to leave what you're saying. Walk to talk. So this man know the scripture very well, but he didn't do it. So he he was trying to justify himself, saying that he loved God, but he had a problem. How can I love my neighbor if I don't know who is my neighbor? So Jesus, right after, bring a parable to explain who was the neighbor. So as Jesus began the parable, he say, went down a man from Jerusalem to Jericho. So the man in the parable was in Jerusalem, and Red Jerusalem represents the project of God. Jerusalem is the holy city, the city that God chose, chose to establish His people and His kingdom. It's the place that where the temple was built, where the Ark of the Covenants was. So Jerusalem is the inhabitants of God represent the place that God in, in had, dwells. So, but for any moment that is not related here, that is not mentioned here, we don't know the reason, maybe seeking for better days, he left Jerusalem, the man from the parable, he left the project of God, the plan of God for his life, and live in Jerusalem, he goes down And there is a passage in Proverbs that says, there is a way for life, it's up, it's going up, to deviate from the hell, which is down. So he goes down from Jerusalem to Jericho, coming from the blessing to the curse. So during this trajectory, he fell down. So that means when you sin, when you committed a sin, the, the, the fall of man is described when in the beginning, the, our first parents, he killed, he, what he, did he do? He disobeyed God. Because this man here in the parable, he was in Jerusalem, and there is a passage in the Bible that Jesus mentioned, stay in Jerusalem until the day that you're going to receive the Holy Spirit from above. So when this man goes down from Jerusalem to Jer Jericho, he fell on the floor, and as soon as he is found, in that circumstances, some 
bad characters assaulted him. The enemy of our souls came to kill, to steal, and to destroy. Here, the way of the mankind, we all one day were in the presence of the Lord when a child born. But did Jesus assure us, from them is the kingdom of heavens. But as we grow, as we mature, we start to understand things and we start to make decisions that take us away from God's project and put us in direction of Jericho, which is the condemnation. And when he fell in the hands of the, the bad people, they steal everything from them, from him. They, all the value, all the valuables, all the, per, the, the belongings, This is what the enemy of our souls does. He takes everything that the man has valuables, all the, 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 the belongings, and destroy them. They spanked him, they assaulted him, and they left, and left him alone. There was nothing more important in him. So he stayed in the way between Jerusalem and Jericho. And half death, half alive is not alive. The scripture says that he was left half death. While the heart is beating, there is hope. There is hope for the tree. Text in Job to the smell of waters it looks like he's dead but it's not and the word of God says that occasionally eventually by the same time went down through the same way a priesthood high priest. So he was coming down from Jerusalem to Jericho. Taking, making the same decisions. Live in Jerusalem to go to Jericho. Live in the project of God to go after his own interest. This priest that was going down, came in down the same way, same road. When he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. And why the priest made that? Because according to the law, he could not touch the man because in the book of Moses, if a man was found on the field, if he was dead or bleeding, the priest, which is the responsible for the, the service, for the sacrifice, the, the one that was a representative between God and the man, he could not touch so he don't get contaminated through the blood or to the dead body. So he looked and as he was not sure and he did not have the resources to help this man, the Bible says that he passed by. And in our days, we see the same circumstances. 
a lot of people are going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and they see the needy and they pass by without helping. So the, the Bible says that right after, likewise, a Levite But uh, to explain what the Levite was, in the same place, a Levite, when he arrived at the place, there is a song that says, I like you, but as your neighbor. And there is many, many Levites saying that, singing songs to God, but not able to help his brothers or sisters, the needy. Go to the temple, sing a song, praise to God, but he's not able to stand hand, stretch hand and, and help. So the Levite talks about the ones that was in charge also and have the role to take care of the house of the Lord the adoration, the temple was taken care, all the songs, all the adoration, and also the anointing to the kings and the, to the high priests, and all the the utensils of the temple. So the priest, the blood, the Levite, the oil, And these two that came down the same way, they did not have what they need they're supposed to have. They didn't have the, the wine, which represents the blood, the sacrifice, and neither the, the oil that represents the anointing, anointment. And the Word of God says they passed by. But the Lord in the parable talks about another character, a third character, a Samaritan. Samaritan was somebody back then that was reproved, rejected. Persona non grata. The one that for the Jews, the Jews was uh, filthy, it was not holy. So, the Bible doesn't mention that he was going down or up, but the way that the, the Jews use, the Samaritans didn't use because they, they didn't relate to each other. They used to be discriminated. So if a Jew encounter a Samaritan, they could be even stoned. So Jesus used this figure of Samaritan, the rejected, and when we read in the book of Isaiah 53, mentioned that Jesus was the, um, the most unworthy man of pain, experienced in work, and there has nothing so we can desire him. So he represents the Jesus, the Savior. We are the people that left Jerusalem towards Jericho doesn't give the value that Jesus have. And many don't believe that Jesus have all the resources to bless your life. So many people that listen to that parable might think that whoever is coming didn't have the resources to help the man that was bit. So, originally we think that the priest might have, right? Or maybe the Levite could sing a song to make his heart joyful. But the resource was not the priest that had. Because the priest, he needs the blood to justify himself. 
but the the good samaritan that represents prophetically jesus he justified the man with his own blood he has all the resources to help to rescue the man that comes down from jerusalem to jericho the needy one jesus is the only one so the samaritan that was coming traveling he was traveling so jesus also make a travel from eternity to ha to the earth and through this traveling he approached the man the mankind the needy one jesus go to encounter the man in his wrong way so the the good samaritan went to f to meet this man and to rescue him so brother if you here tonight that's because the good samaritan jesus he found us in our wrong ways in our sinful ways towards death but he sent his son god sent his son to give us a chance to live eternally with him and this same way paul the apostle paul was heading to damascus and he had horrible intentions he was going with a bad intentions intentions of death jesus found him the same way in the way of death and now we can see a great love and mercy from god things that the priest the jewish the doctor of law they understand about law and the scripture but they do understand that the grace of god is the greatest thing is above all laws so the word of god says when the samaritan approached at the feet of this man he saw the man But if you notice in the scriptures, the Bible says that the priest saw, the Levite also saw, and sometimes we look and we see man. You might see the mankind, but the way that we look is a judgmental look. We always think, ah, there's no hope. He is finished. He's dead doesn't worth to help doesn't worth to stretch my hands to rescue to recuperate so then we used to pass by so the other one saw the man in that circumstance and went and passed by jesus looked but with a different way it was a different way to see it was not a judgmental look not to come then but to to show mercy and he was he felt compassion about that person when he saw his his interior moved with compassion and mercy what that means he act in favor of that man he acts in favor of the needy one it's the action of god so he moved within with compassion and mercy the love of god that makes jesus to act in favor of the needy and to bless the man and the bible says brethren the the samaritan approached and the other ones didn't they just passed by they took distance but jesus went towards the man and one of the names of Jesus is Emmanuel which means God with us Christ in us a hope of glory of eternal life while the man distanced from God Jesus wants to approach from man to the man so if people are making distance between you don't worry god is approaching to 
to heal you, to bless you, to save you, and to fulfill all your needs. Jesus says the Samaritan approached and closed the wounds. There is a song that says, Tell Jesus, where is your pain? But in this parable, he didn't need to tell anything. Jesus, uh, the Samaritan, approached and knew exactly where the wound was. Jesus is this good Samaritan that knows where you were grasped, where you wounded, the difficulties that you go through, where is bleeding, where is your life is like going out. Because when you bleed, you're losing blood, you're losing life. That's why the Samaritan went to this man and he knew that right there, there was someone needy of a blessing for his life. So the, the Bible says that the Samaritan closed the wounds. If you have a wound, if I touch the wound, what happens? Whoever sees me don't see the wound, but he sees the, the treatment. So when Jesus came to forgive man for, for his sins, nobody can see the sins anymore. I forgive you and your transgressions I'm not going to remember. I'll throw in the sea of forgiveness. So whoever look at that man will not see the wounds. I was wounded because I have sinned. I did that and that. So when you see the, the dress on top of the wound, that means God has, forgive, has forgiven your sin through the grace, through the mercy of God. So he closed the wounds. How he does that? How he heals the person. And what is the medicine that he used? He used two substances oil and wine. What the Levite supposed to have, but he didn't. What the priest supposed to have, but didn't. Jesus, so the Samaritan had. So he represents Jesus. He is the, ripe, the high priest. He represents the resources of grace. So when he took the cup, he says, this is my blood. Wine represents the blood. Justification through the blood of Jesus. That's why we we plead for the power of the blood of Jesus to be justified. And the other thing is the oil. The oil talks about whom? The Holy Spirit. He is the one that forgive our sins and pour out upon our lives His Holy Spirit. Interesting, brethren, that having the wine and the oil Who knows, you might be the one, that person, that wounded. Tonight, I have received the wine and the oil. My sin is being forgiven through the power of the blood of Jesus. So the Holy Spirit is upon my life to comfort and to take care of my life, and my soul. But is this all? The good Samaritan could do that. Take care of the, the wounds, I'll forgive your sins, and I'll heal you. I'll baptize you with the Holy Spirit. I'll restore your life, but I'll leave you here by the way. The, the Good Samaritan didn't do that. He did not go towards that man to apply the wine and the oil to leave him there. When Jesus approached to my life, to your life, to the one that needs, he does not come to resolve the momentary problem. No. Because salvation is not the act per se. It's act and process. I accept Jesus, I have an encounter with Jesus, my sin will be forgiven, I receive the Holy Spirit, so I'm going to keep 
in the same way, in the way towards Jericho. So what is the point in there? Jesus not only rescue to abandon, to forsake. Brethren, if one day you found by Jesus, he did not encounter you to forsake you. But he reached you so he can be you can be constantly with him. The Bible says that the Samaritan put him on his animal and he did not leave him there. So the Samaritan did not brought him back to where he was. The Bible doesn't mention. The good Samaritan didn't take him to his own life. Interesting that. Did not leave him there, did not brought him to where he went, came, and not took him to his house. Didn't do that. When we meet Jesus, He takes us. He, he doesn't take us to the same place that we came from. When we have an encounter with Jesus, He does not leave us in the same place that we were. When we accept Jesus as our sufficient Savior, we are delivered, we are saved and justified by His blood. We receive His Holy Spirit. He doesn't take us to His house yet. Where is the house of Jesus? Does anybody here went to eternity? So, when I have an encounter with Jesus, So this is what he did to my life. He did not leave me where I was. He didn't take me back from my origin. And he didn't take to his house yet. But he take man and put him on top of his animal and start to conduct him. And he brought him to a place, determined place. When we have an experience of salvation, the Holy Spirit conduct us to a determined place. Where's the place? So when you when you came tonight to participate to this service, you were conducted by the Lord to this place. So the parable says he put the man on top of his animal and took to the inn. So I'm not going to be in the same place that I was. I'm not going to come back to the, my origin. And I'm not going to the Samaritan's house yet, the house of God. But I need a place to stay. And what is this place? The inn. So he take the man to the church to the, 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 the does the church save someone no it does not but if you want to be saved they stay under the care of the end so the Samaritan brought him to an inn to do what why what was the purpose for that to be treated He need treatment because he was wounded. He was. He needs assistance. He needs someone to assist, to support, and to fulfill all his needs. He was a patient in that place. And he needs people to have patience with him until he recuperates. All the wounds, all the, the situations and the circumstances, 
as a consequence of the place that he left, which was Jerusalem. So when he approached to the inn, he came with the Samaritan. And the Samaritan approached and made a payment so that man could be in that place like a hotel because it's not free. There is a price. The Bible says, by grace you saved. You, we are saved by grace, but the grace is not free. For me, in order for me or you to be saved and to be in this end, there was a price that was paid, a high price. As the Bible says, was not with corruptible things like silver and gold, but with the precious blood of Jesus that paid for my life so you and I can be in this end. And we came here to be treated by the owner of the end, which is the Holy Spirit. Interesting that when he left the man, the wounded man, and he paid for the period that he was there, we are here because Jesus has paid. You are here because Jesus has paid the price so we can be here. It didn't cost you anything, but to him it cost his life. The price of his blood in the cross. So he take two denarii, two coins to the innkeeper, which represents the price of salvation. And, and he say, this man is here and he will be under my support. I will sponsor the period that he will be here. So you are here because Jesus has paid the price. So he gave the money to the innkeeper and said to him, take care of him. So when we are part of the church, we are being taken care by the Holy Spirit. We are received as part of the body, part of the project of Christ, which is the church, the body of Christ. And when, when he approached to the innkeeper and said, take care of him, that means that when we're saved by Jesus, we receive the benefit of the blood, the, and the oil of the Holy Spirit, and we have also all the needs. We all have needs. And that's why the Samaritan said, take care of him. And I have spent some with him, and I have paid already in advance, but he will need more. He will need more things and more care. He will need food. He will need uh, clothing. He will need many things. Take care of him. And everything that he needs, I will repay you when I come back. Jesus will come back. Jesus is coming. Jesus will be back. So he brings us to church and we, uh, we approach to the end. We come already in debt. We are here because someone already paid for us to be here. So we came in debt already. We are debtors before God. And I, I ask you, uh, someone that owns does have a does that person have a good credit so your name is dirty your your credit is bad so you full of death so when we we approached we came as a debtor 
bankrupt. Our debt towards the Samaritan is high. But interesting is, even though you already broken, you own everything. And even though he opens a line of credit for me, who does that? Jesus opened a line of credit. The Samaritan told the innkeeper, I have paid already, but whatever he needs extra, I'll pay when I come back. <coughs> That's why the Bible assures. Seek first the kingdom of God, and everything else will be added. You receive it. So you came, you saved, you baptized, and all the resources you will provide day after day in your life. That's why David, when he mentioned prophetically about the Holy Spirit, he says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. So the Lord has everything for our lives. Take care of him. And we as part of this body, the church of God, we have a mission to take care of one another and to love one another. Yeah, but that 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 and that guy is troublemaker. Brother, take care of him. I'm spending a lot of time. Brother, take care of him. Because when Jesus comes back, you will be rewarded. When you see the book of Matthew, chapter 25 talks about that. Come, blessed of my Father, and inherit the kingdom that is prepared since the foundation of the world. Because I was hungry, and you have fed me. I was thirsty, and you have given me water. I was naked, and you gave me vests. I was a stranger, and you brought me to your house. I was arrested, and you have visited me. Come to my kingdom. So it's a reward. Someone comes. Let's, let's assist him. Let's spend time with him. Not a problem. When Jesus comes back, we'll be rewarded with His grace, with His mercy. We'll be with Him forever.
Brighton. In the inn, the man is well taken care. There we can see the priest, the Levite, and that was the conversation between Jesus and the man based on the law in the Old Testament. And we know that Jesus is the Good Samaritan. And who is the, the man full of knowledge of the law? It's the neighbor. It's the one that needs to be helped, rescued, saved by Jesus. We need to experience the grace and the favor because man cannot justify himself. We are being justified by the precious blood of Jesus. Tonight the Lord has shown through the gifts of the Holy Spirit a man that is being thinking about to move to the north of the United States and he is in doubt between two cities and the Lord showed that tonight he want to say to this man I have no plans for you in none of those cities but his plan for this man is that he keep stay here so we might think about literally someone thinking about to move geographically to the north of the United States, to Canada, or maybe a city there in that city. But the Lord is showing that you should stay because your blessing is here. Spiritually talking, a man, North talks about direction. The man is looking for direction for his life. And the Bible says that there's some ways that look good, but the end is death. It's like Jericho, a cursing. And the Lord is advising that his place is here. It's not in that in that place that he's thinking. There's no other place, but the dwelling is here. When the Samaritan rescued the needy man, took him to the inn and left him there and say, stay there, stay here. You'll be taken care of here. And whatever he needs to spend, I'll pay. And I'll come back. And if he needs anything extra, I'll go to my father and I'll prepare you dwelling. Because wherever I go, I want you to be. So when we left in the inn, we'll be taken by the Samaritan to the eternal life. Amen? Proverbs says the preparation of the heart of man, but the right answer comes from the Lord. So we have our plans, but the Lord is the one that knows what's best for us. Amen? You understand? The dwelling is in the inn. And whatever you need, do not worry. The Lord has paid and he will pay more when he comes back. Let's stand and let's have a word of glorification to the Lord. Lord, thank you as you are the one that is taking care of us. Bless you because sometimes we feel alone, but we know that your good hands, it's upon us. You are the one that search our hearts and know our, knows our needs. You are the one that take care with love for your people. The world is suffocating us with the trials and struggles. But you are the one that is rescuing us. We are in your house, O oh Lord. And from here we depart you only to live with you forever. We bless you for one more night in your presence. In the name of Jesus. Eternal Father, we adore you for the blessings, for the fellowship, for the things that you have done in our lives, for the price paid. 
so we can be here tonight, receive our service as a incense and bless us in the week that will start. We praise you in the name of Jesus. In your name we say, may the grace, the wonderful grace of our Lord Jesus, the love of God the Father, the tender consolations of the Holy Spirit can be upon us now and forever. Amen. The church may be seated. We will have a evangelism next Saturday. No, not next Saturday, two Saturdays ahead. 7.30. During the service, 20, November 20th. So we're going to make the, the invitations. Sunday, 21st, we'll have the, the evangelization of children and intermediates. So two events in the weekend. Everybody can participate. We're going to have a seminar in the South Florida, next to Orlando, 4 and 5th of December. The seminar will start Saturday, 4th of December. By noon, we're going to have lunch. And 1 p.m., we're going to start the first class. And we'll extend to the night. Next day, uh, uh, in the afternoon, we have a break, uh, like a, a lunch, a meal. So you have a place to stay there. And then the day after, we're going to have two more classes with breakfast. So whoever like to participate, make your registrations. We have 400 places only for the whole United States. So act fast, make your registration. And if you have any trouble to make it, have any questions, or if you have any need, do not miss this event. Seek for your deacon, you're responsible for your group and whatever you need pastor, we'll provide it, we'll make sure you're not going to miss this event for any circumstances, amen it's open to all the church and you can go there, if you have any need any, if you need any help myself, the other pastors, everybody's up to help, amen whoever needs a prayer now, an assistance if you need to make more clear about the message for tonight, we would like to assist you.